Hey guys, just charging up the Nocta Macro Legend and Stan sent me a message saying they've got new software out for this bad boy, a software update. Let's check it out and see what they've added. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. I know, buddy. I know, it's almost that time of year. I've got the legend out. And we are updating new firmware for the uh, Nocta Macro Legend. It is actually official as of March the 3rd, and it's 1.11. So we've updated the machine, and I'm just going to tell you guys very briefly some of the things they've added. I mean, there's already been a couple of massive updates to this machine. And I've got to say that this machine, the Nocta Legend, for the price, Okay, what I paid for this machine, it's amazing what I got. Uh, two coils, it comes with the carbon shaft, fully waterproof, comes with the headset. Um, it came with two packages, actually. It was a, like a digging package, and uh, which had a digger, a pouch, and a pinpointer. You know, it comes with their um, pulse dive pinpointer. And I already had one from the Simplex, so I ended up selling the one I got with this machine. But I mean, for 900 bucks, guys, this thing came with about $1,500 worth of stuff. And then, now they are continuing to update the software, you know, well into the second year here of this machine being released. And let's just talk about what they added here, because it is kind of important. Uh, the first thing it says, updates made. M3 multi-frequency in park mode has been updated to prevent coins from being masked by aluminum foil. Okay, call me silly, but how would I ever know <laughs> if, you know, coins are being masked by aluminum foil unless I dug everything. I'm getting a low signal, right? Foil is usually low, seven, eight, whatever it comes in at. Depends on the type of foil cigarette, the old cigarette package foil. You know, that stuff's terrible. Everybody would open a pack of cigarettes, crumple up the foil, and throw it out on the ground back in the 80s and 90s. And I find that stuff all the time. Okay, but unless I'm digging those seven or eights and I go, oh, hey, there's foil and a coin here, I would never know. So how... Okay, so they've, they've tweaked the algorithm. The point is... I don't know how many coins were being masked by aluminum foil to begin with. So is it super important, important that they added that? Uh, yeah, I guess we're saying that things are going to ring up more individually then. They're going to have a different frequency, right? The aluminum is going to still ring up down here, but the coin is going to ring up right beside it here at, you know, 25, 30, whatever it rings up as, whatever kind of coin it is. Uh, and the aluminum foil is no longer going to take precedence in what you hear in the headset, I guess is what we're getting at. Uh, the next thing is they have a bottle cap rejection setting has been added. Okay, this one's kind of cool, but it confuses me. Because the legend is already an awesome bottle cap discriminator in its own right. Bottle caps don't ring up like coins. If I take my simplex machine and I go out in the field and I put a penny here and two feet away, I put a bottle cap. And we go over those two signals with the simplex, they're both going to sound the exact same. 72 to 80. Okay, we don't know which one's the penny, which one is the bottle cap. You got to dig them both. That's the simplex. But this machine, the legend, no, it doesn't work like that. Coins are going to ring up higher, 25 to 40, depending on the kind of coin it is. And bottle caps ring much lower, 12 to 15, if I'm remembering correctly, okay? I've never had a problem digging a bottle cap with the legend and say, oh, I thought it was a coin. Unless you're, maybe they might ring up in the same range as nickels, because nickels ring up a little bit lower. But I'm not after nickels, I'm after silver, <laughs> right? So, again, is this important? Uh, I don't know. And the question you have to ask yourself is that we're discriminating out those lower signals, right? Is it 12, 13, 14? What is it discriminating out? I don't know, right? It just says that we now have nine levels... Uh, you can adjust the BC value between, sorry, eight levels, one and eight, using the plus and minus buttons. When BC is set to zero, it means that it is off. So the problem with that, doing that, guys, is you're not just discriminating 
bottle caps, you're discriminating anything else that rings up in that range. So it's kind of a pointless feature to add in my mind because you're either going to be digging those 12 to 15 signals and looking for items in that range. And if you're not, something rings up as a 12 to 15, you're just going to bypass it anyway. You're just not going to dig it. Yeah, I know it's there. I'm not discriminating it out. I can put a mark on the ground and say, hey, I think there's a bottle cap there and walk away. But if you discriminate it out, you're, you're not only taking out bottle caps, you're taking out everything, right? There could be a piece of jewelry there. There could be a piece of gold there because gold rings up lower. Uh, there could be an artifact if you're looking for relics or artifacts. So again, is it something important that they needed to add? No, I think it's cool that they're adding this stuff and they're tweaking it, guys. But I'm just throwing out there that it's kind of dangerous to be discriminating out things when we don't really know what's being discriminated. We just know that we've got eight different settings that are going to discriminate probably eight or, or is there two numbers for each setting? You know, is there 16 numbers that are going to be discriminated? We don't know. It doesn't say. It doesn't say what's happening. It just says that you've got eight levels of discrimination for bottle caps. The next thing uh, that they've added is ground suppressor setting. It is used to eliminate false ground signals in tough terrain. Well, I'll tell you guys, up here, we have iron all over the place. So when Stan and I are out hunting along the colonial trails, we get minus eight, minus nine signals all the time. And you would think that there's an ax head down there or some, you know, colonial piece of iron. And it's not, it's the rocks. So that might be handy. But again, if you start discriminating that out, you might miss an ancient relic iron piece that is there in the ground. So again, you gotta... I've almost come to the point, guys, after seven years, this is our seventh year now detecting, realizing that all machines from, you know, 10 years ago and newer will find the same things. The only difference between these machines is how they display that information to you. The newer machines have much better discrimination in ID. So they're showing you a better number. They're showing you a better tone, which is more true to the items in the ground. And, and what I mean by that is, again, the example of the Simplex, where a lot of things will ring up in that range, the same as the Garrett AT Pro, that show treasure, but they're not treasure. It's junk items, aluminum, uh, tin foil. I've come to the conclusion that you pretty much need to dig everything unless you're just out cherry picking silver coins for the day, which is what I like to do. Uh, if you're just out looking for relics and history and on those type of sites, you're going to dig it all anyway. So it's awesome that they're coming up with these updates and adding these features, but they're not really well explained. Like I found even the iron discrimination settings on here were not explained to me in a way that I went, ah, I get that right from the, the get-go. I want iron discrimination on because I do have iron in the ground here, but I have no clue what setting to put it on, guys, from zero to eight. D do I need a, a number four or do I need a number eight? I have no idea. And when I put it on either of those settings, I still have no idea as I'm using the machine. Am I missing things? Is it discriminating out items that are there that I want to dig? I don't know. So it requires more research on my part. And I never did figure that out last summer because we only had the legend for the second half of the summer last year. And they're very complex machines. It's great that they have these features. I'm not going to say no to somebody adding features to something that I've already bought and paid for. That's awesome. Just take it with a grain of salt that you don't want to turn all of these things on willy nilly if you don't know what they do and you don't know how to use them. Uh, Test beds would probably be the best way to figure out kind of what's going on here. What happens if I put a nail down and a copper penny and a silver coin, you know, and a piece of aluminum foil. We, we mix and match these, move them around over top of each other and, you know, try different settings. That is about the only way to figure out what these settings are doing, right? Number four, the audio emitted as the tone break points are changed while in 60 tone has been modified with increased bass. So that's really awkwardly worded, but it sounds like they've changed the tone values of the machine itself to make them a little deeper. Uh, that's all I can get from that. Number five, audio gain setting has been activated in gold field mode. 
And what the audio gain setting is, is it sounds items louder that are closer to the surface or bigger. Okay, so that your audio gain is another way to determine if the machine is showing something down visually on the, the visual display is down eight inches and it sounds really loud, then you know it's probably a pop can. It's something bigger. But if it's smaller, you know, you get that nice tight little loot, 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 loot. Could be a coin, could be what you're after. So they have added that for the gold field mode. I don't go gold detecting with my machine, so again, that one's not gonna affect me, but maybe some of you guys, Australians, any Australians out there using the legend for gold nuggets? Number six, warning tones have been added to the buttons. So that simply means that when you get to the top end or bottom end of a menu selection, it's gonna beep and let you know, hey, you can't go any higher, you are at the maximum setting or you are at the lowest setting. Number seven, the brightness of the backlight level one has been reduced. Now I did mention to you guys, I had issues with the second battery. Oh yeah, the legend came with the free add-on battery pack as well, guys, I didn't mention that. I had them both plugged into the machine and I think you're supposed to get about 12 hours on the battery in the legend and then 12 hours on the external battery and I wasn't getting that. I was getting between 12 and 14 hours. Now they give you a range and they say between 8 and 20 hours with an average of 12. So it could just be the settings that I was using but I also had my machine on default when you got the machine and opened it out of the box. The backlight was on. So it was on for the first full three days of me using the machine. I never even noticed. I looked at the screen, I was outside, I could see the screen. Um, I didn't realize it was lit up and it was on the highest setting, number five. So I want to do some testing this summer again with the backlight off. Do we get more battery time? I'm also gonna run the machine with no external battery attached. Measure the time that we get out of the, the, the battery that's on board, and then when it completely dies, plug in the external and do a, another test, run it until it completely dies again and see how many hours did we get out of each battery. Because what I was doing before was I was working until I got down to one bar on the battery and then I would plug the external in. Well, that doesn't really tell me. There might be one hour, there might be two hours left in the battery when I get down to one bar. So we need to do a little better job testing those batteries this summer. Just thought I'd throw that out there because you're gonna see a video on it at some point. Bluetooth chip version will now be displayed, number eight. Bluetooth headphones, which are paired with the device and the Bluetooth setting is selected. You can press and hold the discrimination button. The Bluetooth chip version will be displayed. Um, again, that could be handy for people who are using third-party Bluetooth headsets. Mine came with the headset for the legend and I just, whatever setting it's on, I just use. Now I do own some really nice Aukis and some other uh, low latency sets that I've bought, in, but the ones that came with the Legend work great and work, you know, 60 feet away from the machine, they're still working. We did tests. I don't have any problems with the Bluetooth on the Legend like I do with my Knox. My Equinox is the bane of my existence trying to hook up Bluetooth headset to that machine. It, it just, does not like any Bluetooth headsets. Doesn't like them. You can get the wireless module for the 600 and 800 Equinox, but again, I didn't want to spend another $150. And the Legend came with all of that stuff, right? Came with the headset. Um, and I'm not sure that the headset that it came with is actually Bluetooth. It might be, uh, it might be wirelessly paired, like a uh, 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, also, now this one here kind of interests me. Number nine, uh, no, sorry. Number 10 interests me. First we'll do number nine. Well in automatic ground balance, the auto backlight will now be lit until the ground balancing is complete. Uh, so I guess it's just a visual way to show you it's ground balancing. The light is on, it's still ground balancing. Before it just did its thing, right? I never worried about it. I'm still not gonna worry about it. Number 10, this one interests me. The loudness volume, no, it's not number 10. <laughs> the loudness of the volume level one has been reduced in park field and beach mode. So they've actually turned it down when you're on level one. Um, okay, 
I don't know why. Uh, I like to crank my machine, the volume, so I can hear what's going on. Number 11. This is the one that might be interesting to me. A new level 9 has been added to the iron filter, IF setting. There has been no change in levels 1 through 8, which again, I told you guys, I don't know. I set mine on number 4 and I leave it there. I don't know how to use that setting properly. But level 9 will become handy when trying to discriminate unwanted mid-conductors mid such as shotgun cartridges as iron. Now, we're out in the woods all the time doing colonial stuff and we may go half a day and all we find are shotgun cartridges, the tops, okay, from the early 1900s. Um, that's all that's left is just the top pieces and we find those all the time. Again, selecting that number nine is going to discriminate out other items. And when I'm colonial hunting, I want to dig everything. So again, probably will never get used by this guy. I don't know. Um, but there it is. They have updated the legend uh, well into uh, <laughs> a year and a half after its release, right? So kudos to those guys. Keep it coming. Keep adding the stuff. I'm not saying I'm going to use it all, but it's there. Thanks for watching.